Hello everybody and welcome to the review of the Hoka Onene Clifton 5. Hello everybody, my name is Ben Parks, 236 marathoner and ultra runner and what I want to talk to you today about is this brand new shoe from Hoka Onene, the Clifton 5. So this has recently started uh, shipping a couple of months ago. I've had this shoe for about a month now, putting a lot of miles in it, and just completed the North Downsway 100 mile race in this very shoe. As you can see, it is still pretty disgusting, haven't cleaned it yet. So yeah, we're gonna go into a bit of an in-depth review now about my thoughts about the shoe. So it's gonna be in four sections. So we're gonna have the price, the comfort, durability, and my interpretation of the cool factor of the shoe. So without further ado, let's get on the review and let's get going. So starting out we have comfort. Now this shoe was about the most uncomfortable shoe I've ever worn out the box. I was having so many issues with it. Um, yeah, sort of, this is the uh, insole out of the shoe and all around, so this area getting super, super hot, uh, sort of really rubbing. I could run about two kilometers before I literally had to stop, take the shoe off, sort of like literally be like cooling down my foot. It was just super, super painful. Um, so I tried that for a, on a 20K run and it was just stop, start, stop, start, just absolutely doing my head in um, and then sort of, yeah, tried another run and it kind of did the same thing again. Now, I have had this issue with Hoka's before. I've had the Hoka Clifton 3 and up here somewhere is the uh, Bondi 5. Had exactly the same sort of issues with those shoes and it went away after about 100 kilometers. Um, they get kind of just sort of broken in. Didn't really want to wait that long, so I just took out my, sorry, this is filthy from the run, my sort of custom made um, super feet insoles, put them in and it just transformed the shoe um, straight away. So it went from being about the most uncomfortable shoe I've ever worn, just to put the new insoles in to just acting like an absolute dream. Super, super comfortable, that sort of marshmallow like spongy feeling, feet um, feeling nice and secure, the upper really sort of malleable, sort of really wraps around your feet if you get the lacing nice and, uh, nice and tight there. But yeah, pretty much about the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn. Obviously just ran 100 miles in the shoe, um, which was about 80% of that was on trail um, and had no issues. Didn't even take the shoe off. Ran with the same shoe throughout the whole run, um, obviously with my um, custom insoles in there. So yeah, like no blisters, no sort of chafing in my feet throughout the whole run. So I really cannot sort of praise it highly enough. But with the stock insole, it just wasn't working for me. So yeah, can't really review it that well. With that in, so it's gonna be about a three out of five really, um, because you yeah, have those issues I had. But with me, you know, my experience with this insole, absolutely sort of five out of five, just one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. So yeah, unfortunately, it's gonna to have to be a three out of five. Three out of five. <laughs> So moving on to durability. Well, as I say, I've just, the last run I did in these was the 100 miler. Um, that's the wear patterns on the bottom, so as you can see there, really holding up very well. I've run about 200 Ks in these on the road before doing that race, so up to nearly, nearly about 400 kilometers in this. And apart from some slight wear on the outside of the foot, foot here, which is where I, where I land and then sort of roll in, um, there's really no evidence at all anywhere on the shoe to say what these have been through. Um, super, super impressed. Um, some of the earlier Hokers, um, you know, personally I didn't get that much life out of them, but normally get about a thousand kilometers and I think these are going to be way on for that and more. So probably looking at the moment, probably about 1200, 1300 Ks um, out of these, which is about seven or 800 miles, which for a shoe, um, in modern sort of daytime 2018 is I think really really impressive. So durability for me holding up 
really, really well, so I have to give it a five out of five. So moving on to the price. Well, modern day shoes are expensive. These are recommended retail price of 115 pounds, um, 130 euros or 130 uh, US dollars. So that is sort of more of the top end, but when you look at the likes of something like the Adidas Solar Boost, they're looking about 140, 150 pounds. Um, this new Nike Pegasus, which I'll be reviewing soon, 160 pounds. Um, yeah, so a lot of the shoes, what am I looking for? The, yeah, the Adidas Ultra Boost, um, one of the most popular shoes on the market these days, 160 pounds. So when you start comparing the shoe, one of the big ones, 115 pounds, I think is a really good value shoe um, for what you're getting with the durability. Um, just that sort of versatility, you can do so much in this shoe, you can you can run your local sort of park run 5k, you can run marathons, you can run ultra marathons, you can do anything in this shoe, you can run on the track. Of course it's not really quite as good as a track sort of specific shoe, but you know the wide breadth of stuff you can do in this, I think that is really good, excellent value for money. And it's going to last at the end of the day, which is what most people want, most runners want in their shoes is a shoe that's going to last a long time. So for me, that price. Oh, it's hard to give something a five out of five when it's um, sort of well over, well, a little bit over a hundred pounds. So I'm going to give it, I think, four and a half out of five for price. So moving on to the cool factor. Well, what do you guys think? Is this a cool shoe? For me, this colorway in the orange and turquoise and navy blue, I think is a really, really nice looking shoe. Um, gone are the days with the Hoka's, um, sort of with the, with the threes, sort of really, sort of, really sort of visible, big stack height thing, which didn't look that great, but they hide it so well um, on the Clifton Fives that they just look like a regular shoe, which they are. You know, you could wear these down the shops and no one would be any the wiser. Um, really was sort of great, sort of versatile shoe. Some of the athletes they've got on board these days, like sort of Tom Evans in the UK, um, Sage, Harry Jones, some really sort of cool people, really helping to improve that sort of coolness of the brand. And I think Hoka have gone from that sort of shoe that's sort of quite specialist in the ultra running market to a shoe now that you see regularly up and down um, the country, people in park runs, in Mar whatever the distance, as I said, you know, this is becoming a really, really popular shoe of choice. And, and quite rightly. So for me at the moment, you know, kind of, well, let's be honest, it's not as cool as that. <laughs> That's a five out of five shoe. But for me, coolness, four out of five. So let's look at the summary of the shoe. I've given this 16 and a half out of 20. You know, I think this is one of the one of the best shoes on the market that you can buy at the moment. Yeah, it, for me, it's had a couple of drawbacks. That's not necessarily going to affect anybody. And if you don't have those issues that I had in um, with the rubbing and stuff at the front, then this is going to be almost that's for that perfect shoe. So versatile, so nice and squidgy. You know, I run 100 miles a week. Um, in training in these shoes and I'm getting very very little sort of injuries my legs are feeling super fresh day after day and yes yeah, you know a shoe that can do that and allows me to put those 100 miles a week on the you know through the streets of London um, I think has got to be a very very highly commendable shoe so yeah it's getting the seal of approval from me so yeah check it out at your local running store of course I always say Go to your local running store. If you're trying something new, get fitted, get your gait analysed. This is a neutral shoe, so it's going to appeal to the vast majority of people. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for something a bit with a bit more stability, um, they do do a, a stability version of this, and they also do um, a wide version of this. Now, for me, this shoe was perfectly fine. Nice sort of wide-ish toe box. I have quite narrow feet, so I don't suffer with that. But if you're someone that has um, slightly wider feet, then consider getting the wide version as well. So there we have it.
have it guys, thanks for following along and tuning in to review. My name is Ben Parks and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this kind of thing. I'm going to be reviewing a lot of all these shoes coming up in the next few weeks and I've got some great sort of content on nutrition and strength and conditioning and some of my race reports are there as well. So feel free to check out the other videos and I will see you in the next one.